In this lesson, we are going to look at a system of particles, two particles. We have a one kilogram particle and a two kilogram particle with external forces acting on them constantly. So the one kilogram particle is going to have a, it should be three newton force acts on M1, and we are going to have a 12 newton force acting on particle two to the right as shown here. So let me just erase that ink. Okay. And we are being asked to determine uh, the acceleration of the center of mass, the velocity of the center of mass, and the position of the center of mass. So the velocity of the center of mass and the position of the center of mass. So we are going to start here, as it says, and you definitely want to start with the acceleration because you can just use F equals MA to calculate the individual accelerations of particle 1 and particle 2. So A equals F on M, so we get an acceleration of plus 3 for particle 1. We get an acceleration of plus 6 for particle 2. And then we just go to our equation. Acceleration for the center of mass equals m1a1 plus m2a2. Please make sure that you get the positive and negative incorrectly for a1 and a2. If either of those forces have been, had been reversed, then we would have had a negative instead of these positives. But we simply plug in the acceleration values that we have, the masses that we're given, divided by the total mass, and we get an acceleration of the center of mass of the system of plus 5. To get the velocity of the center of mass, we are going to calculate the individual velocities using the constant acceleration equations because if it's a constant force, we have constant acceleration. We get V final equals V initial plus acceleration times time is our general constant acceleration. So V1 final will be the V1 that we plug into our equation. So V1 equals V1 initial plus A1 times time. We were told in this case that they both start from rest. So we get V1 initial is 0. So we lose V1 initial, so we get a, A1 times T. A1, we calculated up here, was 3, so we get 3T. We do the same thing for V2. V2 initial was also 0. Acceleration 2 was 6 times T is 6T. We are going to plug that in now, the 3T in for V1, the 6T in for V2 divided by the total mass, and we get the, the velocity of the center of mass is 5t. We just keep going with the constant acceleration equations. The position for the center of mass is going to be given by our constant acceleration equation, x final equals x initial plus v initial times time plus 1 half at squared. We're going to calculate the individual x1s and x2s and plug them in for x1 and x2. So we get m1 times x1. So x1 initial started out at position 0. So that's we, get, we lose this term. The initial one was 0. So we lose the second term, and we're left just with the 1 half at squared. So we get 3 halves t squared for x1. When we look at x2, x2 did not start out at position 0. So particle 2, or m2, started out at position 3. So that's why we have position 3 here. It did start from rest, so we get 0. 1 half at squared, I have the acceleration 6 up here, divided by 2 is 3. So we get our x2 equation, goes in for m2x2, 
m1 x1 divided by the total mass gives us our position as a function of time for the center of mass. And notice we have everything we need with our position as a function of time. At time t equals 0, when t is 0, the initial center of mass was here at position 2. At time t equals 1 second, when we plug in t equals 1 second, we get 2.5 plus 2 is 4.5. So the center of mass is at 4.5. And basically what that means to us is if you think of it in terms of nature's balance point, and we go back to putting in a light, strong rod, that would be the balance point for our 1 and 2 kilogram system. And one second later, we would have to put that balance point at position 4.5. So that is the meaning of the center of mass position. So we utilized F equals MA in our constant acceleration equations along with M1, A1 plus M2, A2 over the total mass and then did basically a continuation of the constant acceleration equations for M1, V1 over plus M2, V2 over the total mass and then finally we had the m1 x1 plus m2 x2 over the total mass. Now, the example I have for you to look on the, at, on the next page, and let's go to it because I think I have the blank page in here before I show you the result, is the other version of that question. The other version of that question is where the forces would not be constant. So if the force F1 acting on M1 is not constant. It's a function of time. And the force acting on the second particle is not constant. It's a function of time. We now are going to have to use calculus to calculate our answers. And I've guided you through it here. So you're going to use just Newton's second law, F equals MA, to get acceleration as a, as a function of time. And then you're going to plug that into your acceleration, your A1 and your A2, just as we did before. But and now we have to use calculus. Our V1s and V2s are going to be gotten from this equation, where we're going to have to bring V initial over to the other side. We're going to have to integrate the A functions that we got up here by doing polynomial functions, integrate, increase. We're going to get V1s and V2s, plug them in, then down here. So we'll get V1 and V2 here, plug them in here to get V center of mass. So I'm going to give you a second to pause the video here, and then we can unpause it and look at the solution together. Okay, if we're back, let's take a look at the solution. Well, A1 is F1 divided by M1, so no calculus. We're just taking uh, F1, dividing it by M1 to get A1. We do the same thing for A2. F2 divided by M2 to get A2. And then we simply plug, plug in A1 for M1A1, we plug in A2 for M2A2 divided by the total mass gives us our expression for the acceleration of the center of mass. When we bring the V initial over to the other side, we get our V initial and V initial for 2. Remember, for polynomials, we're integrate increase, t cubed on 3, so t cubed on 3. And here we have t squared on 2, which gives us the 4. So we get our, our velocities as a 
function of time. We plug them in for v1 and v2, and we get our v for the center of mass. So hopefully you see how this game was played, and that's really the only two versions of this question. And we will continue on, and we're going to int start introducing momentum.